and Ijoma Honyato tonight. President Buhari swears in acting Chief Justice of Nigeria, seeks his cooperation in tackling corruption and other challenges facing the nation. Former Chief Justice of Nigeria asked the judiciary to stand firm and defend its independence in the face of pressure. Court grants former aviation minister Femi Fani Kayode bail in the sum of 50 million naira, remands him in Kujay prison until bail conditions are met. And U.S. President-elect Donald Trump meets with President Barack Obama to kickstart transition process as protests trail Trump's victory. On business news tonight, Nigeria's food import deal declines by 5.7% to 648 billion naira from 1.1 trillion naira. And on sports news tonight, Nigeria's Super Eagles are sure fans of victory over Algeria in the 2018 FIFA World Cup qualifier in Uyo. I'm Linda Kibi and from Abuja. All Progressives Congress flags of governorship election campaign in Ondo State pledges rural development as well as employment through agriculture and industrialization. We begin with the President's challenge to the new Acting Chief Justice of Nigeria, whom he has charged to do everything within his powers to assist in tackling three key problems in Nigeria, and that's we're battling with insecurity, economic recession, and corruption. President Mohamed Buhari said this after swearing in the new Acting CJN, Justice Walter Onoge. Justice Onoge, the most senior judge in the Supreme Court, is replacing Justice Mahmoud Mohammed, who has attained the mandatory retirement age of 70. Justice Onoge will remain in acting capacity pending the appointment of a substantive Chief Judge of Justice of Nigeria by the President and confirmation by the National Assembly. The new acting Chief Justice of Nigeria to come at a time that the institutions is going to head play its role of one of the constitutional bodies after the executive, the judiciary and the legislature at this trying time of our nation. Trying time in the sense of the three identifiable problems this country is facing. Physical security, the problem of the economy, and corruption. And this room contains the constitutional bodies that are responsible for bringing Nigeria back into line in terms of security and managing it efficiently by making sure that the economy is resuscitated and that uh, security of dealing business at all stages in the country is free and fair. Nigeria's President Mohammed Buhari. Meanwhile, the immediate past Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Mahmoud Mohammed, has asked the judiciary to stand firm and protect its independence. Justice Mohammed, who was speaking at a valedictory session in his honor in Abuja, said Nigeria was spared the repeat of the June 12, 1993 political saga during the last general election because the third arm of government resisted all attempts to make it compromise its independence. The governor of Taraba State, former governor of River State, retired justices of the Supreme Court, members of the inner and outer bar, and well-wishers gathered at the Supreme Court for a valedictory session in honor of the outgoing Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Mahmoud Mohammed. Shortly after, the man of the movement arrived in company of other justices of the Supreme Court to preside over his last sit-in as the Chief Justice of Nigeria. One after the other, speakers commended the former Chief Justice while bearing their minds on recent events in the nation's judiciary. We in the profession 
have kept a blind eye to our problems for far too long. This type of attitude must now give way to positive thinking as to what will be best for our judiciary, for our judiciary system and the profession. We nevertheless recognize that these events, as distasteful as they have been, present the legal profession with an opportunity to confront the problem of corruption in the judiciary and indeed in the legal profession. The man of the movement, however, chose to look at the achievements of the judiciary for which he says Nigerians should be grateful. During the run up to 2015 elections, our judicial officers withstood immense pressure in order to guarantee a level playing field and smooth transition of government, which ensured that. Governor of Taraba State, former Governor of River State, retired Justices of the Supreme Court, members of the inner and outer bar and well-wishers gathered at the Supreme Court for a valedictory session in honor of the outgoing Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Mahmoud Mohammed. Shortly after, the man of the movement arrived in company of other Justices of the Supreme Court to preside over his last sitting as the Chief Justice of Nigeria. One after the other, speakers commended the former Chief Justice while bearing their minds on recent events in the nation's judiciary. We in the profession have kept a blind eye to our problems for far too long. This type of attitude must now give way to positive thinking as to what will be best for our judiciary, for our judiciary system and the profession. We nevertheless recognize that these events as distasteful as they have been, present the legal profession with an opportunity to confront the problem of corruption in the judiciary and indeed in the legal profession. The man of the movement, however, chose to look at the achievements of the judiciary for which he says Nigerians should be grateful. During the run up to 2015 elections, now to discuss this new development and the challenges before the new acting CJN, I'm now being joined on the news at 10 by a legal practitioner, Mr. Joshua Alobo, and he joins me from Abuja. Thank you so much for joining us on the news at 10. Thank you. All right. Now this change of guard. First and foremost, I, I wish to congratulate President Donald Trump, President-elect, and also congratulate the acting CJN that was sworn in by the president because that why there will be a constitutional crisis but at least before the the retired justice Mahmoud uh, actually retired he was sworn in so it's a good development for Nigeria judiciary okay I was actually going to ask and, if I can just put the question to you and then you can you can answer back if you can hear me clearly I was trying to say that this change of guard has come at a time when there's a lot of criticism for the judiciary. So how do you think the new acting CJN um, should process? Uh, in as much as he has been in the Supreme Court uh, for all since 2005, that is uh, almost seven years now, he is abreast with the problem of the judiciary and good enough there have been a lot of uh, institutional framework with what has happened between October 7 and 8. So you see that the revised code of conduct for judicial officer, the national judicial policy, all are targeted to strengthen the judiciary in Nigeria. So for me, the Justice Onoge is an erudite justice that is aware of the problem in the judiciary, and he will frontally tackle it as has already been commenced with the NJC position and so the position of the justice that were arrested. So to me, a lot of things has already been resolved prior to his appointment today in the acting capacity pending when the confirmation will be made by the Senate in oh, due course. Yeah, and you see the, uh, the outgoing CJN asking um, the, the incoming CJN to ensure that the judiciary remains independent. To what extent is, is the bigger question? Uh, uh, because is the, the independence of the judiciary is the safest guide, uh, safe guide for 
a democratic institution to flourish. And for him to make that statement, it shows that uh, there have been a lot of influence which he posited that would have made the democracy to be derailed, even though that the judiciary stood firm. So for him to talk about maintaining the independence of the judiciary is to make sure that there's no interference from the executive and the legislature in discharging the onus duty of safeguarding the fundamental right of the citizenry and then the overriding objective that is encapsulated in the constitution. The call is a wake-up call for every judicial officer to abide by the code of conduct in order for the judgment that is delivered to have inherent aspect of justice because there's a distinction between a judgment and justice. Who has a judgment has element of justice, the society will flourish, and then there, there will be a prosperity for the nation, and by so doing, the independence of the judiciary will be safeguarded. But if the, the independence of the judiciary is not safeguarded by the judges, and they are allowed to be influenced by any uh, association whatsoever, like what has uh, been in the public domain, it will impugn the independence of the judiciary. And that is why the outgoing CJN advised and admonished the judiciary as an institution to make sure that their judgment reflect the position of the law and not to allow any interference from the executive in particular. Because I think the major problem of the judiciary, based on what the outgoing CJ have said, uh, squarely lie with the executive arm. Because the executive arm has made subtle attempt to corrupt the judiciary. And uh, we must oh. look at this issue holistically. And um, for every arms of government that is fighting corruption, must ensure trying to uh, corrupt the system. That is the essence of that admonition. Well, are you saying that the executive has tried to corrupt the judiciary is a subject of debate? That's your own personal opinion. But what I would say is, what about, inter what about when you're talking about um, judicial officers being accused themselves? Let's not look at interference from outside. What should the C new CJN do in a case where you have judicial officers, the ones being accused? Look, uh, I'm not trying to say that the, uh, the aspect of, uh, of uh, corruption in the judiciary lie with the executive. That's not what I'm trying to say. In as much as the code of conduct has been in existence and the machinery for the enforcement of that code has been set up and the NJC is alive to its responsibility, it lies on the judicial officer to decide whether to remain in the bench or no, because once you play politics and you compromise the sacred oath that you take uh, that, uh, that was uh, that, uh, that was sworn at the time of becoming a judge, then such person um, uh, that action amount to misconduct, and that was well spelled out. And like uh, in the course of the speech today, the revised edition of the code of conduct was even brought to the public domain because some, a lot of persons thought that it's in 1998 that is operational and the ethics. The, uh, the ethics committee that was set up, headed by Kutigi, and then the Committee of Anti-Corruption and Transparency set, uh, that was set up on the 27th of October, all is geared to ensure that the judicial officer is alive to his responsibility. Because we cannot shy away or say that it's AYZ that is responsible for the problem in the judiciary because the problem lies within the system. And NJC is an uh, establishment administrative body that is capable of cleansing the system once they are ready to exercise the power that is uh, the constitution has donated to it pursuant to section 153 of the constitution. And like what the uh, outgoing CJ have said and what is already on the ground with the decision of NJC that we tell that they have asked the uh, arrested judges even though they have not been charged to court to stop sitting. You can see that it shows that they are also in line with the public opinion because in Nigeria we think that public opinion does not count. It does. Even the NBA has has eventually buy into the uh, the domain of the public opinion in order to make sure that justice is seen to be done because he who comes to equity must come with a clean hand and when you see to determine the affair of any human being you must live above the board like in caesar and that was even the threshold yes, of the admonition yes. by the cjn that they must be conscious of their oath of office to live above the board because we cannot keep on blaming the uh, the game that is the executive of the legislature right. that is uh, responsible for the corruption 
in the judiciary. It's, okay. uh, it's an in-house issue that NJC is empowered to cleanse, and I think they have woke up. Thank you, legal practitioner Mr. Joshua Adol Alobo. Thank you so much for joining us on the News at 10 tonight. And in part two, after the break, appellate court special panel grants Ondo PDP aspirant Eitai Ojege the leave to appeal Abuja Federal High Court judgment, substituting his name as governorship candidate. That's in a moment. Good job,